very good morning and it's a pleasure to have you for our weekly devotion and this morning we will meditate from the gospel of Luke chapter 12 and verse 20 and it says but God said to the rich man you fool this very night your life will be demanded from you then who will get what you have prepared for yourself I'm going to address the subject this morning the sin of covetousness the sin of covetousness in Jesus' parable of the rich fool, God speaks harshly to a busy farmer who has had a bumper crop. Shrewd businessman that he was, the farmer made plans to build bigger barns, store up his surplus and take his life easy from then on. His mind raced hundred miles an hour with the fuel of covetousness, but he had no thought of being grateful to God. One of the most remarkable things about the Ten Commandments is that God includes in it a law against covetous disposition. We read that in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 17. A covetous person is one who has a strong desire to possess something or someone, especially something or someone that belongs to another. Now God, by adding a law against covetousness, represents a profound understanding of human nature. Untold destruction of families and nations has been caused because of an individual's greed to possess someone or something that which rightly belongs to somebody else. And that could be anything. Wars against nations typically begin because one side wants something that belongs to the other. In fact, greed or covetousness is actually one of the primal sins of humanity. Adam and Eve coveted the knowledge of good and evil. They wanted for themselves what was properly only to the Creator. And so they grasped for it, plunging the universe headlong into ruin. David coveted Bathsheba and committed adultery and then murder, for which of course he repented later. Covetousness is a signal of discontent. Covetousness manifests itself in a lack of gratitude and generosity. There is nothing inherently wrong with being wealthy or seeking to increase one's prosperity. But the danger arises when we make riches our chief end, when we are never satisfied with what we have, but we think that acquiring somebody or more stuff will make us eventually happy and that is what we see here in the parable of the rich fool the rich man did not stop to thank the lord for his prosperity he was dissatisfied with what he had and wanted bigger and better barns so that he could hold even much more than he could contain he strove to acquire more and more because he prized self-sufficiency instead of a life of dependence upon God. He did not seek to help the poor and thus failed to show trust that God could provide for him every day of his life. So what was the end of this man? God judged him for his idolatrous treatment of his wealth and people who are covetous will be likewise condemned for their lack of thankfulness and generosity. Scripture does not condemn wealth, as I said, because wealth can be a great tool for the kingdom of God. Instead, it condemns those who serve their wealth, who make it their God, and do not thank the Lord for their possessions. God calls each one of us to be thankful and generous people. But if we are not, we are likely giving into covetousness, and we must repent and seek to serve God with our riches. The Bible says the Lord is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So this means that we receive lots of opportunities to turn from our selfish ways and to follow God's way, the way to real and full life. God often nudges us and speaks with a gentle and insistent voice, but sometimes he also thunders in our life. He calls us to repent and to recover and to reorder our lives, to make him first in our lives above worldly success. 
and there will be of course a day of reckoning as Jesus points out later on in this parable. So let's listen to God this morning urging us to follow the way of real and full life and not the way of being covetous. In your life what kind of priorities might need changing this morning? We might be tempted to covet someone or something or some position that belongs to another which we think will make us happy but then we could be proven very wrong. Which way is God nudging you and me this morning to overcome being covetous? Let's look to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning and Lord, we pray that you would help us to overcome any form of covetousness that may be riding in our hearts and our minds. Enable us, Lord, to be delivered from it and to be satisfied totally in the provision that you give us daily as we depend upon you in faith for our daily needs. This we pray in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Rock. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and have a great day.